it all began in Spain almost a month ago. We've been to Berlin, we've been to Saint-Quentin. Last night was night four, it was London. Tonight, we repeat the feat, but go bigger. A month of full gas fighting for prizes on the boards of Europe now reaches its climax in the British capital. Coming up to the final lap, the bell is about the ring, and Richardson is not yet where he wants to be. Certainly as Rudjuk is opening it up down the bottom, he is now, though, look at this. Look at this from Matthew Richardson. He's dialed in, he has the pace, he has the power. He may even be able to ease off across the line here, and he does. Matthew Richardson, extremely impressive on his way to the night sprint final. It's not over until it's over. It's Saunders who's at the back, by the way. It's Dakin who's at the front. In the middle. The man who just needs to qualify for the final to make himself the Champions League winner again. He's going to have to close the gap here. We know he has the speed when he wants. He's putting that speed on now. And here he goes, two turns to go. Into the home straight. It's early in the night, but he's already done it. Harry Lovelace wins the Champions League for the second time in his career. No big celebration yet, there are races and events to be won, but that's that, deal done, signed, sealed and delivered. Harry Lovresen is the champion. And in the final, we'll have Matthew Richardson versus Harry Lovresen. Look at this. So far this year, 3-1 out of four events in the sprint. Richardson showed in the last couple of weeks he can change and turn the tide. He will want to finish on a high, even though he knows that the man he snatched the jersey off last year has got it back in 2023. One of the three laps down. Lavresen still there, Richardson. This time last evening, they were weaving up and down, weren't they? And again, look, it's Richardson on the inside here. They go high, there's a groan from the crowd, but it's going to build up to expectation and excitement. The bell rings, it's Richardson who's going to lead it out. He's got three, four bike lengths, but that gap grows smaller. Look at this acceleration now from Lavresen, but is it going to be enough as they come around into the home straight? It's Richardson going all the way, and Matthew Richardson takes a wonderful win in London on round five. And Lavresen might be the league leader, but Richardson with one final knockout punch. Richardson delivered when it mattered the final sprint of this year's Track Champions League. And look at him lapping up all of this from the crowd. Hoopster, as she likes to do, at the front leading it out. And she's going to do that as the bell rings. But we know that Bayona likes to sit in the wheel and make her move in the final 200 metres. She's doing exactly that now. But can she get around the young German star? She's halfway to doing so. She gets neck and neck as they come into the final straight. Bayona's there, and Bayona might just have that, you know. Marta Bayona, like a bullet, into the final. And Alessa Cantriona Putsta has a mountain to climb now if she's to win the Champions League. Bella's wrong and it's still Andrews. She's ridden the whole race here from the front and now she's being challenged. Wong's making a move. Gachiola trying to put her foot down on the accelerator as well. But it's Andrews, Andrews and Andrews all the way. Never in doubt. Both riders coming high up the track at the moment, really trying to take advantage of the full height of the boards here in London. And who's starting to get on top of that gear as well. Ayona, still there in front. Halfway through this final now, and this speed is really going to be ramped up. The bell's ringing. One final sprint prize left this year in the Champions League. It's Bayon at the front, and now it's Andrews who's going to try and get her out. Look at her acceleration. She has it, and she has it in abundance. This is Andrews going all the way, and if there's no late reply, which I don't think there will be, that is one impressive win by the Champions League winner-elect. 
She knew that her closest rival, Propsa, wasn't in the final, so that was really crucial there. But look, she's had to go deep there. 201 beats 10 minutes. It's men's Kieran time and the final. We have quite the lineup for the last big bang for the sprinters here in London. It's time to start racing. Three laps of the men's sprint lead to go, 750 meters. They look around. The tactics begin. Let the games begin too. Who's going to make the first move? It's Truman in the end. You can see Richardson laying off the wheel of the race and giving himself room to sprint into rather than sticking to that wheel like blue. He's also being aware, just in case anybody comes around, now it's Joe Truman that makes the move. And he's going to follow Richardson, who goes right, and look at the Fredersen as well. They are flying supersonic already with one and a half laps to go. Neck and neck, elbow to elbow. It's Richardson who's torn away from the rest. And he's got a big lead now going into the final 200 metres. La Fredersen's there. It's going to be the top two against each other. Two turns to go now into the final straight. It's Richardson going all the way, but La Fredersen coming round. He won't let anyone get beyond him. They went quickly. They heard the sonic boom. They did not let up. And Harry Lavresen has been pushed all the way tonight by Matthew Richardson. Beaten earlier on, but here to wear his crown. It's King Harry, winner of the UCI Track Champions League yet again. Well, Richardson really making him work, pushing him all the way to the line. 2,122 watts he's putting out there. And look at the support from Travis and the other Dutch riders. That was incredible. Harry Levresen with 191. Richardson, who had a very good second half of the Champions League and looked more like himself after a relatively slow start compared to last year in the opening two rounds. But he competed, he was here, and those two have given us quite the show again. Shall we do it one more time? It's the final race of the series. It's the grand finale. And these are the six riders who are going to take on the women's Kieran final. Bayona sits at the back and she's on the wheel of Andrews, the big favourite. Finucan is at the front and is forced to turn her head. Here come the big competitors. Andrews starts to make her move. We know that she likes to establish a position early in a race. Yeah, Fanukan winding it up on the front. She knows that that rush from behind is going to come. She's just waiting patiently for who is going to be the first runner to make that move. And with one and a half laps to go, here it goes. It's Andrews who's going to hit the front. Hoopster is starting to lose her way a little bit, trying to gather it for the final lap as the bell goes. It's Andrews who takes over the front by Yorna on her wheel, but Fanukan is still down on the black line, trying to get ahead. This is the moment that Andrews pushes ahead, however, trying to seal the deal with glory. Fanukan is ahead again, though, but it's Andrews to the line. Andrews all the way. It's Andrews from Bayona. And Elise Andrews celebrates winning the Champions League in the best style imaginable. The Kiwi contingent celebrate as Elise Andrews, the world Kieran champion, becomes the Champions League winner. The final standings then. Andrews beating another debutant in Alessa, Catherine or Pupster. Bayona missing a week, maybe a what might have happened if she'd been able to come to Berlin in round two. And looking down the league, well, riders who come here and got plenty of experience. A rider of a generation, breaking the points record this year. And also taking back the trophy he won two years ago. From one legend to another, Hoy de la Bresen. The latter, the Champions League winner, 2023. And what a debut this has been. All the way from New Zealand. She's done it with joy, she's done it with happiness. She has been top dog on the track. And Elise Andrews, on debut, is the Champions League winner among the women's sprinters.